G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. You can probably see right now that I'm not tucked away in my normal little corner in front of the bench here in the workshop, but I'm at another bench. Why you say? Well, I'm glad you asked. What I wanna to do to improve efficiency here in the workshop is to get a desktop computer with wireless internet access together with wireless keyboard and mouse and that way I can tuck them away when I don't need them and they won't take up any extra space here in the workshop. Ah, one problem that turned up was the monitor all of a sudden disappeared. Uh, nothing on the screen whatsoever that I could see anyway, but yeah, I've got to get it up and running before I can get this thing mounted where I want it. What's wrong with it? I don't know. Let's have a look at it together. As you can see, it's up and running. No L problemos there, guys. But uh, let's give it some time, let it heat up and see what happens. You can probably notice the little green button down here. So that indicates that we still have the thing turned on. It hasn't physically turned off. It's got power going to it. So to me, it's pointing to a backlight issue. Aha, there we go. Hang on. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Right, is that any better? Yeah, you can see that, can't you? You can see my little Miracle Max dude up here. And I think YouTube's up here somewhere, but you can clearly see like my Miracle Max people there and there. Um, it may come back on, guys. Just hang on half a sec, bear with me. But YouTube is yeah, just about there somewhere. And a Miracle Max, one of my little videos is there. So yes, we are definitely looking at a backlight issue. Okay, now that we've figured this out, Let's head to the lab. To disassemble these, it's not too hard. As you can see, I've got my little container here and always with my containers, I put what the item is so that I don't get confused. Over here and here, you'll notice that there's a couple of holes and they're covered by these rubber bungs. They'll need to be removed to access the screws that are hidden below. Also, eventually you'll need to get rid of these VGA uh, little anchor points that go in here, over here. Also, you'll need to get rid of these two screws here. Reason being is because once you pull out the stand itself, in theory, come on little fella. Okay, there's another screw hidden right here. Right down the bottom here are two little cutaways. You'll need to use a flat blade screwdriver or something like that just to get in there and lever that cover up. And I must admit, it did take me a little while to get it off because it was tucked in there pretty tight. But a uh, little bit of patience and it should unclip. And eventually it should just lift off. And push off the tops there like DOS. As I said before, you're going to have to remove these little VGA uh, anchor points, those little bolts that go in there, then the whole cover just slides down and comes off nicely like that. You'll also have to remove this connector first. So where do we start? Well, as you know, a good visual is crucial. I'm not sure if someone has been in here before because you can see these little connectors have been numbered and these are the ones that go off to our backlight. Whether it's had an issue before or not, I'm unsure. Of course, as I said, a really good visual is important. I'm mainly focusing on the capacitors for now, these guys, and sometimes you can see that they're bulged and leaking, etc. I can't see anything wrong with that right at the moment, but I'll check them with my ESR meter and see if there's any issues with that. I don't believe I need to check my main board um, simply because of the fact that it is powering up and it's staying powered up, but it's a backlight issue. Take off that power supply now. It's been off for a couple of days, so I have no issue about the main filter capacitor being charged. That should be drained, but I'll double check it anyway. I've spent about 10 minutes here having a thorough good look over, a really good visual. And as they say, you wait till the fat lady sings before you claim any sort of victory. And I have been caught out before where I thought I've got something and thought got it wrong. But in this case, look, there's definitely a, a issue with this particular um, pin here and this goes on to a transformer on the back end and this little guy over here 
goes on to oh look at that another pin of the transformer so this is our transformer pins along here and we've lost one and we've lost a second one either end of it and look once it heats up you're going to end up with all sorts of issues i'll solder these first and then i'll check the esr on all my caps on the other side as well while i've been waiting for my soldering iron to heat up i've been checking all the esrs or the equivalent series resistance of each of these electrolytic capacitors now this one over here as you can see i've put a dot on because i'm not happy with the results so let's just double check that and see what the reading is and that is giving us a reading of 0.67 now it is a 25 volt 100 microfarad and that should give us about 0.5 so it's a little bit on the high side another one that I've highlighted over here is uh, this bloke over here now there's two of them and I've been able to compare the two just in case my chart was a little bit out so these two are 10 volt 1000 microfarad capacitors so let's flip them over and see what they are and this one over here is reading 0.1 and this bloke over here is reading 1. There's a big difference between 0.1 and 1 isn't there? And these are uh, the highest they should read is about 0.5 so yep I'm going to be doing that one and that other guy that I highlighted before. So the two I'll do is this fella and this fella over here. I'm going to add just a dab of solder to these two points on the little transformer that I showed you before that should make a good quality joint. As I mentioned, it was on the back of this transformer here. That's the issue. So it's those two points there and there. Freshly fluxed up and a nice hot soldering iron, adding some new solder as well to increase the continuity or the good contact that we have there. And I'd say those two points are good. You can see those joints are a lot better than they were before, aren't they? There's no cracking on there, no distortion, and it will have good contact there, and hopefully that will solve our issue. But in the meantime, I'll get rid of those caps that are dodgy, put in some decent ones. When replacing capacitors, it's important that you choose the correct ones. You can't go down in voltage, but you can certainly go up. So in my case, for instance, I don't have a 10 volt 1000 microfarad but i do have a 16 volt 1000 microfarad so that's what i'll be using and also i have a 25 volt 100 microfarad so i'll be using that one so i've selected the two that i need let's just see how they compare to the old ones the esr on the new ones because i've got small brain syndrome as usual i've actually written down the esrs of the old ones the ones that are still on the board let's see how they compare to the new ones now this fella here is the what's that 16 volt thousand microfarad so that's comparable to this one here let's just see and we had 0.32 on that one let's just see how that compares to the new one and we've got what's that 0.1 big difference big difference okay almost three times and let's have a look at this one over here 25 volt 100 and that fella there registered 0.69 before didn't it so what's it measuring on the new one we're getting 0.2 once again that's about three times the ESR on the old uh, capacitors so I'll just solder those in just another thing to keep in mind when you're doing electrolytic capacitors is that they have a certain polarity in other words they face a certain direction so if we pop this fella out here i've already soldered it off the back you can see there's a white patch over here so that white patch represents the negative side of the capacitor so you always want to face it that way don't stick it in backwards she will blow to smithereens so negative side goes towards that white patch over there that's ready for soldering they're soldered in place nicely you just got to clean it up with a bit of uh, osylpropyl alcohol make sure that got rid of all my flux and that my connections are all good and the other fella lives over here somewhere give him a bit of a tidy up as well make sure he's all shiny ready for his next day at work this one over here is that 16 volt one that i did and of course the other one over here is my um, 10 volt one yep they came out pretty good happy with that stick it back together see what she does i've got it back in the workshop just propped up on the bench there and normally it sits on that mounting just up there but uh, i've still got the back off etc just so i can keep an eye on it 
and uh, just have a look there. So all the back's just hanging off, so it's just propped up there nicely. So I'll keep an eye on that over the next uh, X amount of hours and make sure that uh, she stays alive. Then hopefully we're on a winner. Not a bad idea to make up a sign to uh, indicate that uh, it's live, not to touch it for yourself and for others. It's easy for you to come back and forget about it yourself. So just a gentle reminder there that it is live and to be careful, turn everything off before you start putting it back together. So I've had this monitor running for about five hours now without a single dropout. I'm really happy with the results. In particular, it looks like the main fault was the dry solder joints that we saw across either end of that transformer. Of course, it was good to replace those faulty capacitors as well. I hope that you enjoyed this video today, guys, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So until next time, guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.